We're on the roof of a hotel in Chester. It's brilliantly sunny. And we're about to plumb in a solar twin, hopefully in 10 minutes. Two volunteers. That are top of the sort of please meet you. Thanks, Chris. Face the panel as best we can towards the sun. What we've got now is a panel that's stagnating. It's sitting in the sun. What we're going to do is cool it with this water here. <laughs> and so could you do the RN for us, please? What we'll do is we'll put something heavy on the ends of the pipe so they'll dangle in the bucket properly. So we're going to go water, pump in the bottom, zigzag out, come out of the see how warm it is. We've also got electrics to do. Here's the PV, these little brackets, and it's designed to go on the least and last shape of the corner of the panel. We're going to stick on the ground today. So we're putting the little inserts in here, three pieces of pipe, all water to pump, number one. Up to bottom of panel number two, and then the third one is the exit. But with the thermometer, we're just going to measure the air temperature. Once we've done that, we'll measure the water temperature. Pump started? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do the connection down this end. Little brass insert went in here. This clip goes over the middle third. What we end up with is it fitting in there with one third inside the sheet, as we call it, one third of the clip over, and one third on the last bit. And um, put that on the put that little thing on the bottom so it's out of sight, never mind. Nice connection there. See that the actual metal is actually buttoned up against that. Right. There's a little V's on the top of it. So, would you like to do this one here? See so if we can just blow some steam out there. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we've got delivery, we've got water, we've got pump. There, and now let's do the final connection. Can you see the bubbles were there, folks? The pump was pumping air already, so the pump will prime the system. Can you just shut it between the Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take the back off the pump so you can actually see that it's working. When the leaf lands on it, it wouldn't stop completely, it'll just slow down. What's the air temperature? 23. 23. I think that's a bit warm. We must have been sensing a little pump of warm air down by the ground. Um, so before we start pumping, get a temperature measurement of the bucket. Well, the bucket will go down by about two litres because it's two litres volume in the pump. So what we're doing now is, is the priming process, blowing the ground to the pump. So if you were doing this in a house and it was a sunny day and you were priming it, you would be actually hearing that glug 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 at the end of the vent pipe. And this will go on for whatever the appropriate time is. Now this pumps in peak flow about two thirds of a litre of it. So in about three minutes we should pump the air out here and we should be getting a slug of particularly hot water. Water temperature is 18. Yeah. Let's just check the temperature. The bubbling has stopped. Stuff, yeah. The um, bucket yeah, level has yeah. dropped. Yeah. And we have water trickling through the panel. Yeah. What are we at now? 7.5. Density is every 30 seconds I think. Yeah. What's the maximum temperature you can hope to achieve on a standard in cylinder? In a cylinder, the hottest we've got in independently conducted plants, for a brief few minutes in the middle of summer, when people have been using the water for, for days, it was 87. So we're at 80.6 degrees. Now that's what's called the first slug. We're still pumping the first two litres of water out of this. This temperature will actually drop once we pull the, 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 the panel down a bit, because it was stagnating. My fingers are getting a bit cold. So, so we're fairly settled in about 80 degrees here. This hot water is being delivered to the top of the cylinder. At a slow rate, a bit more than a pint a minute, in full sun. And that water is being stored at the top of the cylinder, which is obviously where the vent pipe and the, the taps are attached to as well. And the cold water stays at the bottom, so you've got quite strong stratification, strike quite strong floating of the hot water on the cold. I don't know if anybody's swollen an alpine lake, you'll get very, very hot if it's, it's not a windy day. The water hasn't been turned over by the wind, you'll get warm water on the top, and then you put your leg down about half a metre, and it's absolutely ice cold. Well, the same thing happens in hot water centres, provided you don't stir it up too much. Temperature wise, what are we at there? To summarise, then, putting it in and out of the bucket is very easy. We've shown the slow flow of the water. Uh, by standing in front of the PV, we've shown that it's variable speed. <laughs> uh, have the right area of solar panel to the right side of the storage volume for the level boiler system because the solar control is actually designed to switch the pump off when the cylinder gets too hot to dump some heat. So imagine it was say 80 at the top of the cylinder and 60 at the bottom, so it would take water out of the bottom, cool it down and that would then cool the top of the cylinder. And as soon as the top of the cylinder reaches 65, the pump would get switched off again. 
So the nice thing is that the sun isn't always square onto the panel. That's the benefit of not having a track of time. In the afternoon, when the sun's coming from over there, the panel won't stagnate over 100 Celsius. It may only reach a maximum temperature of, say, 50 or 60 degrees. And you can use that lower temperature panel as a, as a way of exporting it. Trying to work with nature as best we can. Yeah. Thank you very much. My fingers are getting a bit closer.